Hey, this is the first segment of this brand new show. Hey, how about that? All right, let's let's talk about pro wrestling and the world champions of 1980. Uh, of course, this is the first segment about the NWA world title, which was at that point the most prestige and most important belt at that time. Of course, the NWA was still divided up in the old classic territory, so the NWA world champion would have to go to majority of those territories and defend the, the belt there. Against their top guys. And of course the champion of the time. Who held the belt the majority of the time 1980. Was Harley Race. Um, Harley was in his fourth reign. As the NWA world champion. I believe Harley won the belt. Uh, for the fourth time. In, over in Japan. Uh, November 7th 1979. Against Giant Baba. Who is no stranger to the belt himself. Um, Giant Baba was. Uh, at that point, former two-time world champion, the guy who was in charge of all Japan wrestling, which was a NWA territory over there in Japan. And so he traded the belt back and forth between Harley that year, 1979. And ironically enough, they would do it again in 1980 in September when John Bobo would win the title for the third time on September, f I believe, uh, what day is that? September 4th, uh, I believe it was the 4th. Yeah, 1980. I gotta get my facts straight here. But, uh, yeah, it was September 4th, 1980, in, over in Japan. And then Harley would regain the belt back nine, five, not nine, five days later, excuse me. And, um, on well, September 9th, 1980. So they traded off the belts one more time. And I, I was able to find those uh, two matches here on YouTube. And you guys can see that on the, uh, after this segment here on my playlist uh, on World Champions of Pro Wrestling Episode 1. It's on that playlist on my channel of uh, um, Michael Miller. As I try to learn how to talk on this camera. <laughs> but anyways, Harley Race was mainly the champion. Except for those five days in Japan where he lost in the Giant Baba and regained the title from China Baba. So it wasn't really noticed here in the States. But Harley was the champion. Of the world in the NWA, and um, probably one of the most exciting things Harley did too, as well. And I got some clips of uh, this event. Was um, technically the WWF was still NWA territory, like I said earlier on. Uh, it was uh, back in '63, of course. Vince Senior and his partners broke away from their own company because of the result of the Luthez Buddy Rogers World Title match. And Buddy Rogers, King, of course, King of First Champion, of course, from 63-71, the was then known as the WWWF, uh, the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, and it was a recognized world title. And then Vince Sr. secretly rejoined the NWA, so it became like a self Tommy for most of the 70s and into the early 80s. And it was uh, the second and third time in... In wrestling history, you um, that uh, for the year 1980, you're, Harley Race, who was the NWA World Champion, would face Bob Backlund, who was the WWF Champion, and they would fight each other for a so-called unification match. The first one would occur in uh, Madison Square Garden on September 22nd, 1980, I believe. And ironically enough, two days before that was a Bob Marley concert. So. <laughs> Uh, it just tells you how great New York City was at that point. Yeah, Bob Marley concert, and then you got the NWA champion versus the WF champion for a unification match. Of course, I believe that match ended up being a. If I remember right here, my records here. Um, Bob won that one by uh, disqualification. But they would meet up later in the NWA territory in St. Louis. Uh, Bob Backlund. Would lose that one at best out two three falls because apparently the last fall Bob uh, was disqualified. So, unfortunately, uh, the belts never got uh, unified. There would be another unification match down the road before Vince Jr. would totally take over the company. And you'll probably be seeing that um, in those videos for that particular match later on. But you'll be seeing clips of the Harley Race and Bob Backlund. Um, Promos and uh, lost uh, silent footage of the match in Madison Square Garden here on uh, the show today or tonight, whatever you guys are watching the show. But yeah, Harley had a pretty good uh, schedule going as the NWA World Champion. I mean, 
you know, you have these guys complaining today, saying you had a tough schedule. I mean, the NW World Champion traveled a lot. Even in 1980, he traveled a lot. Um, I mean, he was defending the belt in St. Louis, in Vancouver. I mean, Vancouver, he actually defended the belt against Roddy Piper. Uh, it was Roddy Piper's first uh, time at the NW World title. It was in Vancouver, and he was wrestling for them it was against Harley Race. Harley also wrestled for NWA Hollywood. He wrestled for uh, Big Time Wrestling in San Francisco. Um, he did a lot of the title defenses in championship wrestling in Florida. So a lot of people in Florida probably remember Harley Race back in the day. Uh, he also wrestled in Georgia Championship Wrestling. Um, he did uh, a couple of stints up in Maple Leaf Wrestling up in Toronto. Actually, that's where he won the second title. And Terry Funk was in uh, up in Toronto. And he also wrestled for uh, Central States because he's from Kansas City. Um, so, you know, might as well go back to the hometown and defend the world title. He did it once there against like, Dirk Murdoch. <laughs> and wrestled what was then NWA Big Time. Would later become World Class Championship Wrestling, the organization run by Devon Eriks. And, of course, he wrestled in all Japan. He would wrestle in Calgary, Mid-Atlantic, which is one of the big territories he wrestled there. And, of course, he wrestled in the WF, of course, with the uh, UDP match against Bob Backlund. Uh, excuse me. Probably the guy who had the most shot to Harley race uh, through the whole entire uh, year was Ric Flair, the nature boy. Woo! All right, I just had to get that out of the way. Uh, he Rick had sh faced him in three different territories for the belt. In St. Louis, in the Mid-Atlantic, and Maple Leaf. And of course, it'll be a year later until, you know, they finally would give the belt to Rick, but he wouldn't win it from Harley that year, of course. And of course, that's going to be another story for another episode. Um, like in the St. Louis territory, he faced, uh, like, uh, David Von Eric and his brother Kevin. Um, also Rocky Johnson, the, the dad of The Rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson. Ken Batera, who, ironically enough, would face Bob Backlund so many times for the WF title. And Ken was the top guy in St. Louis with the Missouri uh, title, and he also held uh, the new uh, WWF Intercontinental title. He was the second person to hold a belt because he won it from Pat Patterson. And let's see what else we got here. He faced Andre Giant in NW Hollywood and also uh, Championship Wrestling from Florida. And of course, people don't realize two years before that he was one of the first people to slam Andre Giant. It wasn't Hogan back in WrestleMania 3, it was actually Har Harley Race that freaking did it first. So, gotta get Harley for credit for that. And then, let's see, in F Central uh, Championship Wrestling in Florida, he also faced uh, Dusty Rhodes, who he traded off the belt with the year before. He also faced Manny Fernandez. Uh, he also wrestled Bobo Brazil, who was kind of an unofficial champion back in 61, 62. Some controversy between him and Buddy Rogers, but he, you know, he defended against Bobo Brazil. He also defended also there against Dick Murdoch. Uh, Barry Windham had shot him a few times uh, for the belt in Central in Florida. I keep saying Central in Championship Wrestling in Florida. Uh, Mike Graham. And then Dory Funk Jr. had a shot at them. And it was Harley won his first title from Dory Funk back in 73. So, and then he and George Championship Wrestling, he faced Tommy Rich, which would be another part of the equation in 81 for that title. Um, Dick Slater had a shot at him in Georgia. Um, Jim Brazil and uh, Tony Atlas. So, I mean, the list goes on here. It's, and, you know, and like... Um, of course, he would face David Von Eric again in his dad's territory. And uh, also in all Japan, Jumbo Tosarota uh, faced him for the title. Also, Jumbo wrestled for Dick, uh, Nick Bockwinkle for the AWA World title. So that's another kind of coincidence how all these federations at the time were in good terms with each other. You know, to I could say Vince McMahon Jr. screwed it up for everybody by dominating the market in 84, I believe, and later on. So... And in Mid Atlantic, he also, you know, obviously faced Ric Flair. He faced Ricky Steamboat. You know, he defended the belt against Ricky Steamboat. So pretty much that was Harley's schedule for 1980. And besides the loss to Giant Bomba, Harley kept the title pretty well. And you know, and there's no doubt about it. Harley Race was probably one of the greatest NWA World Champions or the World Champion of one of the greatest of pro wrestling. No question, Harley was the man at that time. And wrong enough, he was only 37. I'm 36. 
So, I mean, jeez. Harley was pretty well much a satisfied athlete. So, that's it for this uh, segment here. Hope you guys had fun learning a little history lesson about the NWA world title back in 1980. And hope you enjoyed these clips that I found. And thank you for the people who post these clips on YouTube. Um, and I'll be back here after these clips. And you guys will talk about the AWA world title in 1980. So, thank you for watching.